It's February, and in America, that means it's Black History Month. So for the entire month of February, we are going to look at the contributions of Black Americans, both historical and modern, to the world of pictureology, starting with none other than Shannon Mustafer on today's episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. Hey there, hello there, welcome back to Mike's Hard Reviews. My name is Michael, it's great to have you all here today. I'm the bartender from Kalamazoo, Michigan, and today we are going to kick off Black History Month by talking about mixologist, cocktail educator, and author Shannon Mustafer. And Shannon Mustafer is based out of the Brooklyn area and still operates there today on a variety of projects, but her start in the world of hospitality and restaurant culture goes all the way back to when she was 19. At the time, she was originally looking to become a chef, and amongst uh, the support of her friends, they put on this really big uh, dinner party themed after the 1996 movie Big Night. This is a great success for them, and it pilots Shannon into the world of restaurant touring and the crafting of experiences. In her own words, the bar won out. And in 2014, she becomes the beverage manager for a jerk Caribbean restaurant in, uh, I think, Manhattan or Brooklyn, New York, uh, called Gladys's Kitchen. Now, Gladys's Kitchen did close down in uh, 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but from 2014 until that point, Shannon was their beverage manager. And in that time, Gladys's blows up in the world of bartending and mixology culture for being a haven for rum and rum-based cocktails. You see, Shannon's latching on to spirit educating was perfect for the idea that is rum, because rum is a characterful, cultured, and interesting, diverse category of spirit, and one that she wanted to share because those things were important to her and still are to this day. So much so that even after Gladys' Kitchen closed in 2020, Shannon continues her work with rum in, uh, in the act of publishing a cocktail book called Tiki Modern Tropical Cocktails. This was published in 2020, and I unfortunately don't have a copy to share with you guys, like physically, right now. But despite that, was released to fantastic acclaim. There's a group known as the IACP, the International Association of Culinary Professionals, who awarded her the best new title in beer, wine, and spirits in 2020 for the release. And since then, the book has become sort of a, uh, not maybe not a Bible, but pretty close to it for anyone who is interested in tea cocktails or rum cocktails as a broader category. Tiki and rum were a perfect thing for Shannon to latch on to because it was filled with character, and it was something worth sharing, and in the case of Tiki, worth modernizing and expressing that it can be something better than its original sort of Polynesian appropriative um, presentation. Furthermore, the book is actually written by the means of teaching people how to make cocktails. It's very focused on technique and the careful use of ingredients, and in Shannon's own words, was sort of written under this idea that it should be something that people could read and then take the technique away from for the act of, for the purpose of making their own cocktails. And I can think of no better reason to write a book. That is exactly the reason why I want to write a cocktail book. That's amazing. <laughs> Following the publishing of her book in 2020, uh, Shannon goes on to establish two different groups uh, focusing on uh, women in bartending. The first is called Women Who Tiki, which uh, was a sort of stand-up, pop-up, single-night, like, limited-run events, uh, events coordination group that placed women at the forefront of bartending service and highlighted the one, uh, women who were very talented in the field of bartending. Bartending and mixology are very male-dominated interests and professions, so what Shannon's doing here is sort of giving equity to women and allowing them to be seen and respected for the great work that they're doing in the world of mixology, which is absolutely amazing. <laughs> Seems that they've kind of um, fallen, fallen out of vogue and moved on, people have gone their own places, but while it lasted, it was a really important part of the mixology culture that is steadily growing in population for women, and that's great representation. Aside from women who tiki, uh, Shannon was also responsible for the founding of Women Leading Rum, which is a more business-focused, uh, business enrichment group that connects women uh, working in the rum spirits industry um, of all different kinds. So it's not just uh, mixology and bartenders and people who are cocktail consultants, but also people who are actually working on distilling and sourcing and uh, rectifying or selling rum and focusing entirely on the notion of 
giving women a support structure in that business model to be successful. Again, super important because these things are traditionally very, very male dominated. Shannon uh, is still a member of both of those organizations, whether they are defunct or not, and has done incredible work in sort of bringing mixology to the forefront for everyone and especially for groups who have not been well represented prior to her involvement in them. And it's an incredible opportunity, honestly, to talk, to learn about and talk about what she's done. Um, it, it puts a smile on my face getting to hear it. It's really amazing. So that's the that's the lowdown on Shannon, um, a long-standing member of the mixology community who's done writing and consultant work and sort of given mixology a new leg to stand on in a modernizing world that no longer needs the appropriative style of tiki and needs to give respect to prominent female bartenders. And I can think of no better way to continue to honor that than by making one of Shannon's own cocktails, a hibiscus margarita. So Shannon's recipe for a hibiscus margarita includes a specialized ingredient, a hibiscus syrup, but not just any hibiscus syrup. I have made a batch of this hibiscus syrup sort of pared down to a smaller bottle size uh, here. And what makes this unique from a more traditionally hibiscus flavored syrup or like a grenadine is that it also includes spices, namely clove and cinnamon, which are gonna give us some additional complexity and help complement the sort of vegetal nature of tequila. I haven't tried this yet. I actually saved, saved this uh, to try until today because I wanted to get the reaction to it on camera. But I will say, while I was cooking it, um, it smelled awesome, so I'm very, very excited. The recipe for that is gonna be in the description down below as well as the we uh, website where I sourced that from. What is written in the description is a sort of pared down and kind of simplified version of this because um, Shannon's recipe calls for using pre-made uh, simple syrup that you steep the tea and spices into, and that's a more time-consuming process, so I sort of did the same function, but all in one step, actually making the syrup at the same time that we're doing the infusions. So it's gonna be a little bit different, but it will accomplish the same sort of flavor profile. Additionally, if you didn't want to spend a lot of time in the kitchen for this cocktail, there is actually a black-owned liqueur uh, named Sorel. A Sorel is a hibiscus liqueur also flavored with like unique, uh, like citrus, citrus, dried citrus peels and uh, clove and cinnamon and nutmeg and spice. It's such a cool idea, a cool thing. That would be a perfect fit here because it's the same flavor profile, the same ingredients and things. You're, you're just gonna have to balance it a little differently and it'll work just the same. Anyway, let's go ahead and make a hibiscus margarita. To begin, we need to grab a lowball glass and a lime. Take a wedge of the lime and rub that along the rim of your lowball glass. Then take some salt and rim the glass with it. And then we will set that aside to cure and dry up. Next up, grab your shaker. We're gonna start this off with three quarters of an ounce of hibiscus syrup. We're gonna come behind that with three quarters of an ounce of fresh lime juice. Next up, we need just a quarter ounce of an orange liqueur. Shannon's recipe does call for an orange curacao, which is gonna be more rich than a triple sec. I'm using a triple sec here just because I don't have a curacao on hand right now. And a pour of the small, it'll be about the same. And finally, one and a half ounces of a silver tequila. Gonna swap our tins around and then grab some ice to fill this up with. As always, I'm gonna do one whole cube and one cube cracked. I'm gonna pass wet in to dry, tap it down to seal it, then shake that for 10 to 12 seconds. I was a little bit too voracious with that tap down because this is a glass, uh, a glass pint glass. I definitely put a huge crack in that. I wonder if you can see that on that camera or not. We're gonna double strain it, so it'll be, it'll be fine. <laughs> gonna grab our glass back up here and fill this up with some ice. And then we'll double strain our cocktail in. To finish this off, we're gonna grab a little wheel of lime here. Put that down alongside our ice, just like that. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Shannon Mustafer's Hibiscus Margarita. With our station ever so slightly cleaned up, we're gonna go ahead and uh, give this a sip. I wanna say I did very carefully examine that cracked uh, Boston that I, part of the Boston I was using. No glass fell off of it. It's just a very sharp split through the glass. So this is uh, gonna be safe to drink. <laughs> Cheers.
Oh, that is nice. There is a very particular fruitiness to um, hibiscus tea that you don't really get with any other kinds of tea. And on top of that, it is also floral and tart. So it's this very three-dimensional and characterful flavor component that in the context of a margarita works perfectly because the tartness complements the lime, the floralness complements, complements the tequila, and a little bit of fruitiness complements your orange liqueur. On top of giving it this just absolutely gorgeous appearance, it makes for an extremely well-rounded and dynamic cocktail that frankly, I don't know if it can be beat. <laughs> It's everything you love about a margarita, but with an extra fruity tinge to it. Not to mention a really beautiful standout color that you really only get from hibiscus. And it's just smooth and light and refreshing and bright. Uh, and frankly, it makes me wish that it wasn't winter outside because I'd go sip like three or four of these on the porch if I had the opportunity to. Let me try it with the salt. I don't normally do salt with my margaritas. I prefer them to be plain. So let me give that a shot. I got a little too much salt. Use a coarser grain. Outside of that though, really, really tasty. <laughs> There's a really nice interplay happening here between the tequila and the sharpness of its uh, sort of vegetal tones and the kind of softening mellowness of the hibiscus that is just very fun. And it it's just, it's, an, it's a margarita elevated. Do the spices come through prominently? No, not really. But that's probably my fault because I didn't follow the exact recipe for her syrup. I didn't allow it to steep the way it's supposed to. I imagine more of that flavor comes out if you let it steep longer. I thought cooking it in would make it more prominent and maybe overpower the hibiscus, but in reality, it's, it's really just the hibiscus that I'm getting, which is a little surprising. But despite that, my God, that is <laughs> so tasty. An absolutely phenomenal cocktail. Thank you very much, Shannon. This is a, a really, really great, a really, really great drink. And I'm very happy I got the chance to make it. Well, this will not appear in the book Tiki. Uh, you can find a link in the description down below where you can buy that or follow the description, uh, the, or you can do the recipe in the description rather uh, to make this yourself at home. Because honestly, I think you should give it a shot. It's beautiful, classy, flavorful, and well informed. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Let's go ahead and do our reading from Chris Toast. Actually, I almost forgot. No, we're not. In reading some interviews uh, that Shannon gave with a couple of different organizations, she actually presented a toast of her own. Uh, so we will be reading that instead. And that toast goes as such. May your drink be potent and your journeys pleasant. Cheers. The drink, potent. The journey of making it, pleasant. As a result, the drink is also pleasant and the journey was potent because I learned something. Look at that. <laughs> Thank you again so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed, go ahead and click the like button down below and subscribe, or even better yet, go look through the links in the description down below to read more about Shannon, uh, her interviews with various groups, or buy a copy of uh, Tiki Tropical, uh, Modern Tropical Cocktails. I can't wait to get one because Tiki has become a big, a big player in my house because I have, oh, let me show you. Almost all of this shelf is rum. I like rum. Tiki fits me well. <laughs> Thank you again, Shannon, for sharing this work with everybody and for being just a great person in general and doing so much work in this uh, industry that I love dearly. Um, without you, it wouldn't be the same. So thank you for all you've done. Go ahead and click all the buttons and stuff. I'm not gonna bother with that this time around. Honestly, I would really much rather you go look and research on Shannon's, uh, Shannon's work with mixology than follow me. Uh, but if you choose to follow me, thank you very much. Please remember to drink responsibly and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.